Different countries have different approaches when it comes to cryptocurrency and taxation. In several countries, cryptocurrency is not regulated and therefore cannot be taxed. In fact, due to their seemingly abstract nature, countries like Turkey, Bolivia, and Nigeria have banned cryptocurrency entirely, making it illegal for financial institutions to facilitate crypto trades. With that being said, countries like the US are very open to cryptocurrency and have found ways to regulate the industry so that they can generate revenue from the transactions made. For instance, every cryptocurrency exchange exchange that operates in the US is bound by the Bank of Secrecy Act (BSA), which makes it entirely possible that the IRS is monitoring crypto transactions and collecting taxes from you whether you're a crypto investor or simply just a holder. With so much that's still unknown about the world of cryptocurrency and taxation, we've decided to take a look at what you need to know about crypto taxes and what you should be doing. But before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with your notifications turned on so that you don't miss any of the new videos we post. First up, why do we pay taxes on cryptocurrency. The IRS considers all form of cryptocurrency as properties and thus it treats them the same as bonds and stocks or any financial instrument used in the foreign exchange market. So even though cryptos are not physical assets, they are as valuable and taxable as a new condo or a car would be. The IRS started taxing cryptocurrencies in 2014 and since then, the agency now requires taxpayers to report all cryptocurrency transactions to their tax returns. Although not a lot of people are aware of the taxes that they incur from owning cryptocurrency, and many people have reported tremendous dissatisfaction with their crypto experiences, noting unwarranted deductions during crypto transactions and exchanges as the primary concern. Next, foreign account reporting. Have you ever used a foreign exchange or a foreign-based wallet since last year? If so, then chances are that you've probably got a few more forms to fill out. Some of the popular foreign crypto exchanges include Binance Malta, Bitfinex Hong Kong China, Bitpanda Austria, Bitstamp Luxembourg, CEX.io UK, Buy, South Korea, JAX, Canada, and KuCoin, Singapore. According to FBAR, the US foreign bank account reporting requirements, if you've held at least $10,000 in foreign accounts during the past year, then you need to give the US Treasury a heads up using FinCEN Form 114 and the IRS with Form 8938. In order to do this properly, you will need to take the maximum amount that you've had in all of your foreign crypto accounts and foreign bank accounts during the past year, then convert those amounts to US dollars and add up all your funds that are held abroad. If the total exceeds $10,000, then you will need to report each of your accounts to the two previously listed forms. But if the amount is below $10,000, then you do not need to report. Keep in mind that this does not apply to offline hard wallet holdings only when the institution directly holds private keys on your behalf. That said, if you've used a foreign exchange at any point for transactions of $10,000 or higher, then it still counts, even if you've only kept the funds in there for a day or a few hours. Number three, crypto tax requirements for transactions. In 2014, the IRS officially classified cryptocurrencies as property, making all cryptocurrency gains subject to capital gains tax. This may seem like a minor detail, but the implications are massive for anyone that trades or transacts with crypto, since now each and every transaction must be treated as a taxable event. Given the speed and frequency of crypto trading, this can create a reporting nightmare for crypto trades. Crypto investors and users must record everything from tiny transactions to large investments. This includes the date of each transaction and its value value in US dollars. It's a pretty unforgiving and time-consuming task, not to mention intrusive. Imagine if you've had to report every single purchase you made with your credit card to the government each year, and then convert all of those transactions into a completely different currency. You would need to know the exact time of each transaction and the price of the crypto at that precise moment. That's the practical result of having crypto classified as property. Also, crypto tax requirements for investments. When it comes to crypto investments as opposed to crypto transactions, things get a little bit trickier. Imagine if you want to use crypto instead of a fiat to make a loan, and you want to lend 100 Bitcoin at 10% interest. Theoretically, your transaction should result in a capital gain of 10 Bitcoin, which you should be liable on when it comes to taxes. However, since you must record transactions in US dollars, all of the transactions must be converted to dollars at the time of the loan and repayment. So if the price of Bitcoin rises or falls during that time, then the simple transaction could render you with a much higher or lower capital gains liability. Ability. This holds whether or not you ever realize a gain in dollars. Applying archaic asset classification to this new asset class has created a significant discontent between what's happening on paper versus what's actually happening in reality. Regardless, it's paramount that you make yourself aware of these requirements so that you can accurately report your capital gain earnings. Number five, tax requirements for crypto earned as income, mining, etc. But what if you didn't buy your crypto but instead earned it through mining? Unfortunately, any crypto gain 
gained through mining is taxed as ordinary income based on the fair market value of the crypto on the date it was received. Since most miners do it for profit or business, they are mandated to remit taxes from gains, in which case a fair market value applies, meaning that you report the value of crypto transactions at the price that they were mined at. Additionally, if you are mining for yourself and not for an employer, then you are also subject to self-employment tax on your mining profits. Simply put, if you mine crypto as a hobby, then you will need to report your transactions as taxes. Although you may have a tax reduction following costs and resources you spent to mine the crypto. Next up, gifts and donations are taxable. Gifts and donations or any form of crypto inheritance are seen through the eyes of financial appraisals. Crypto donations are seen as cash donations and a fair market value applies to them. As a donor, you only account for taxes for the value of the crypto when donated. Subsequent activities following it do not affect you, such as when the inherited crypto gets recycled in the market or when its value appreciates. None of this affects you. Rather, the new holder or seller pays for capital gains. Essentially, you are not liable for any taxes on the gift unless you choose to sell it. Then the capital gains liability will be based on the price at which it was purchased by the person who gifted it to you. For the most part, the same applies to crypto received through an inheritance, although in some cases you can apply to have the base value of the crypto adjusted to fair market value on the date you received the inheritance. Also, crypto tax rates. For crypto trading income, the amount that you'll owe in taxes will depend on how long you've held your crypto before you sell it. If you've held your crypto for less than a year before selling it or transacting with it, then it's considered a short-term capital gain. This is taxed at the same rate as ordinary income, which, depending on your income bracket, can be anywhere from 10 to 37 percent. However, if you've held your crypto for more than a year before using it, then your transactions can be subject to a more favorable long-term capital gain tax rates. These can vary from 0 to 20 percent, depending on your income bracket. If you're in the top three highest income brackets, then you will also need to pay a 3.8 percent tax on net investment income. Number eight, remember that ignorance is not an excuse. The IRS uses a strict approach to crypto taxes, with Form 1099 covering taxes from miscellaneous incomes other than salaries or tips. Form 1040 in the U.S. individual tax return that taxes are calculated annually from your total income. Unfortunately, you can't escape paying taxes on these accounts because Form 1040 requires you to answer questions on when and how you traded or exchanged crypto in the past, and sanctions may apply if you fail to act in accordance. And finally, accounting for taxes has a limited approach for crypto investors. There are a few approaches for calculating taxes for crypto investors by the IRS. That is why it is becoming extremely difficult for beginners to report taxes. The most popular ones are the highest in, first out, HIFO, the last in, first out, LIFO, and the first in, first out, FIFO methods of accounting. However, the FIFO is the most readily available for use by crypto investors in which crypto assets brought first are first accounted for. The easiest way to navigate these crypto tax complexities is to use professional cryptocurrency tax reporting solutions. This way, it's easy to generate your audited tax report with the simple click of a button and helps to save crypto traders money, stress, and potential legal issues. And with that, it wraps up the video. Thanks for watching.